Okay, let's see how things are progressing with the coronavirus pandemic in Slough. The Labour MP for Slough is Tan Desi. Hi, Tan. Good morning, Andrew. When last we spoke, um, things were significantly worse with the number of cases in Slough than elsewhere in our area. And we were uh, coming up with all sorts of theories as to why that might be. Is that still the case? Is it still a, a COVID hotspot? No, it seems like in the, the rest of southern England, uh, it seems that uh, the number of cases has decreased. Uh, and that uh, has been borne out, borne out by my meetings with the council and with the uh, Frimley Health Trust. The figures coming out are very encouraging. So that's good that we seem to have dampened the, the number of cases. Excellent news. Um, let's talk about schools. Are we going to see schools in Slough open in a fortnight, do you think? Look, I think all of us uh, want to see our schools open. And, and that's what I said in Parliament as well. Um, just last week, I said, you know, it's great news, uh, Education Secretary, that uh, you know, that we are looking to move towards opening schools. But at the moment, there is a fear, Andrew, amongst uh, many of our parents of actually sending their kids back to school uh, because we should be very, very careful. You know, the government, first of all, needs to work with the trade unions. It needs to work with all uh, stakeholders to ensure that there is a safe passage back to opening our schools. Uh, you know, we should only be doing so, the government should only be instructing to do so once both the science indicates that it's safe to do so and we have the confidence of all of those affected. Mm. At the moment, the reason why there's many um, there's fear, for example, in, in Slough, we've got the, the issue uh, that uh, we have a large BAME population. There, there are many individuals living in intergenerational families. So that means that the children are living with their parents and grandparents. And what we don't want is uh, for the schools to become some sort of coronavirus factories whereby uh, uh, you know, the children go there then they come back and then that also leads to the infection of uh, the older generation and those with uh, underlying health conditions because that could prove to be deadly. Uh, well, I mean, that's a very compelling argument that says kids shouldn't be going back to school. But then Slabber Council have written to parents saying they expect to start reopening schools on the 8th of June rather than the 1st of June. Well, the sort of uh, demographic facts that you describe about people living in multi-generational households, that's not going to change by June the 8th, is it? Well, look, uh, ultimately, whether it's Slough Borough Council or other councils, they are having to act on government advice. They can't uh, do things on their own. But, but uh, because of how the education system currently is, what is actually happening is that around the country, and including in Slough, it won't be the council uh, per se determining when a particular school comes back because many of them are actually independent academies. So each school will be making its own decisions. Uh, and that's uh, you know, a part of, of the problem whereby some schools will open, some will partially open, others will decide not to open. Uh, and it will also depend on, uh, on the parents because the, the, the key issue here, uh, Andrew, is that we by now should have had a test track uh, and isolate a process uh, already in place and it, the government actually stopped doing that in March and now three months later the government is now saying that by the 1st of June we'll now get that process back up and running. Just in terms of how to organise things within schools, am I naive in thinking well surely planning for that should have started when the schools closed in March and it, it, in the way it's being discussed it's like um, schools are just starting to think now well how will we organise it when we come back? Look, uh, there has been, uh, you know, teachers to their credit, there's been a lot of online teaching, so that's been uh, great. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, so th there has been teaching, there has also been planning. But the problem is, is that until we get the virus under control, uh, then you know, there will be serious concern. And that's why what I said is that until the government has in place measures of a large scale testing, tracing and isolating, as the Germans have done, the South Koreans and others have successfully done, that's the way that you get the population fully on board. 
But the, the reason why it's been a shambles is because, uh, you know, three months ago, uh, uh, for whatever reason, the government decided to abandon that, whether it was herd immunity or whether it was whatever else was going on, uh, when the clear World Health Organization guidance was test, 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 and then start tracking, start isolating cases. Uh, because if we don't have the thing under control and then we open things up, then there could well be a second wave, which is what we do not want. Mm. Uh, just in terms of um, the easing of lockdown restrictions, it seems there have been pretty big gatherings all over the country. I'm sure that's true in uh, Black Park and Slough, some of the other parks with people uh, using the open space. You know, that's what they're being allowed to do now. But it, do, do you think that's happening to an extent that brings people into uh, too close contact with others? Well, some of the pictures that have been coming through, uh, including the pictures uh, from those on public transport uh, and especially on our parks or beaches, uh, is very disappointing because if you do not practice social distancing, and I, this is my uh, you know, plea to, to the public, is then we are merely facilitating uh, another outbreak. We need to be practicing social distancing. We need to make sure that we keep ourselves and others safe. And if uh, people think, oh, look, you know, lockdown has now been eased, it, it's, it, it's all uh, normality resumes, then I fear that they have not quite understood the severity of the virus and from personal experience andrew having lost three family members including my grandmother my uncle uh, and my sister's father-in-law i can tell you that once this has an impact on your personal families it is devastating uh, and you feel differently you about it. That. I was going to ask you about this. I'm really sorry, by the way, about the losses you've experienced in your family in, in recent weeks. What kind of toll has that had on you and the family? Oh, look, it's been devastating because you can't even mourn, you can't even grieve properly, Andrew. It's the, the issue is is that even at a funeral, my grandmother's funeral, only ten of us could actually attend the the service in the crematorium, uh, and you know we're used to mourning collectively, as in people get together, uh, they discuss things, they they exchange the memories of that individual, and you are devoid of all of that, and that that's uh, what is uh, I think one of the most painful things uh, to when you experience a loss and unfortunately uh, as a nation you know we have exemplified a case study of how not to control this coronavirus we've got the second highest number of deaths in the entire world that that is just ridiculous for for such an advanced nation to have one of the best healthcare systems uh, we've got things uh, at our beck and call and yet we have made a complete hash of uh, of how to deal with a pandemic all right tan thank you very much indeed for being with me